Hey guys, it's Monday morning here in the Philippines and like every Monday it is time for us to do a premium unboxing. And as I mentioned over the weekend, we are focusing on Hot Wheels premium trucks. I have a couple from the Redline Club, a couple from the Car Culture series, one from the Fast and Furious series, and also a chase piece. So we have six really nice ones to open up for you. And as you can see, I kind of switched up the diorama a little bit to give us some different scenery for today's video. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and knock out the two car culture ones first. Uh, and I'll start with the oldest one. And this is when the car culture stuff was still in the small cards from the first year. Uh, I think this is 2016 going into like 2017 so this is still your smaller cards and uh yeah this is actually their truck set i don't remember this may have been like the third second or third i know you had your uh japan historics one then they had the euro style then i think it was the trucks but i may be wrong uh, but this was one of the first sets, as I said, you can always tell that the first year because they were all in the short cards. Not short cards, but small cards. Um, so this was actually a really cool set. They had a pretty good lineup. I kind of regret not getting them all, but I just kind of grabbed the Silverado and grabbed the Ranchero. But unfortunately, I traded the Ranchero uh, a year or so ago for, I think, a Mopar, as usual. But uh, I would like to pick it up again and at least get the Ford F-250 uh, if possible. The Subaru Brat and the Datsun's cool too, but I would say these would be my top three favorite. And obviously the Silverado is my favorite, that's why I held on to this one. So he's been hanging on the wall for a while, so it's time to take him out of the package and get a better look at him. And this is still when the... Uh, car culture series, I guess, wasn't like their higher end stuff, like the retro entertainment. So you'll see like a lack of like light decals or tampos, whatever you'd like to call them, on a lot of them. Like the GH1, you can notice that there's really no like headlight and taillight tampos on a lot of them. Uh, so that's because they were still a little cheaper, not the main premium set. So after uh, the first year, they seen they were going to be a hit and they put them on a bigger card and started adding a little more detail and I think they also upped the price by a buck. So let's get him out and get a better look at him. As I said, he's been in the box for, well, since I've owned it. So here he is. Very cool truck. I do really like this casting. Uh, still need to find the Real Riders 4x4 one, the maroon one from... Uh, I think it was about 2015 or so, but a really cool uh, body style, the 07 to 2011 Silverados. Cool with the sport bike in the back, big black five spokes with the rubber tires. These look like the rear wheels that would be on Bone Shaker, I think except they're a little bit narrower. So it looks really good on this truck though. They're kind of spot on for the width and diameter being the same all around. Cool paint job, like a pearl yellow with black stripes. Silverado tampo on the door. And as I said, it would have been cool to see some tail light tampos and a bow tie on the rear tail panel. But still, not too bad though. I mean, it's still a nice truck, nice to have, and wish it had headlight tampos too. They kind of lacked on both ends, so it's basically like a main line with rubber tires. So, still yet, yeah, not too bad though. I do dig it, and I think it's metal base also. So, pretty cool truck. So, that is like your first uh, run of the car culture stuff. Second car culture we have is from uh, last year and this is when they kind of upped the uh, I guess you could say guidelines on making these and they started making them with a little more detail as you can see bigger card and stuff like this 
the detail on the front end, well you can't see because of the brush guard and push bumper, but you can see on the tailgate and tail lights much more detailed than the Silverado. Um, so this is the 1980 Dodge Macho Power Wagon. The first appearance of this casting was in the Retro Entertainment for Simon and & Simon. And I have that one too, but it's already loose. That's why I didn't bring him out for today, or I would have. So this guy, I have not opened yet. So let's get him out and get a better look at him. But first, let's take a look at the set. Actually, I wish I would have got the wagon ear from this set too. All of them are pretty cool, but since I'm a Mopar guy, I wish I would have just got the wagon ear. Raptor, also pretty cool. Um, never been a fan of the Olds 4x4. It's, but still not bad, if that's what you're into. Uh, but I prefer the Mopars in the set, so I'm going to have to keep an eye out for the Wagoneer. So let's go ahead and get him off the card and get a better look at him. So as I said, it's got some nice details with the livery on the side and then the power wagon decal on the tailgate with the Dodge emblem painted detailed tail lights really cool like big heavy duty push bumpers light bar is kind of part of the casting but still not bad it's kind of open Almost like a Ram Charger would have been. Metal on metal. Nice five slot wheels with the mudder style tires. It does have detailed headlight decals. You can see behind this big push bar, brush guard, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, you could see how they up the details like comparing 2016 to 2019 well even 2016 releases going into like 2017 I think by mid 2017 they were switching it up I think JH2 was the first one that had the big cards so we did JH1 and then did all the ones that followed after that up to JH2 then JH2 I think was the first ones launched with the big cards in the more detail so, yeah, like the idea that they added more detail, charge a little more for them now, but uh, the big cards are not bad. It's just like if you are a card collector, it's nicer to have them in the smaller cards because protecto packs are easier to find. And uh, the bigger protecto packs are also a little bit more when you do find them. And also, if you're hanging them on the wall, they take up more space. But... Um, I'm an opener, so it doesn't really matter to me. Sometimes I'll have stuff hanging on the wall, but that's only until I get the urge to open them. So, anyways, let's move along to the FNF. And this is the last one from the Motor City Muscle that I was telling you guys I was saving for this unboxing. We did the Grand National and a Grand National Hot Wheel exclusive I did a couple Saturdays back. Then last Monday, we did some... Hot Wheel Muscle Cars, and I did the Impala, the Torino, and the Nova, and I told you guys we would be doing the Lightning today, so here he is, and I was really excited about this because I've always liked these trucks, even the first edition, or the first generation uh, Lightning, I did like those too, like the 92, 93 body style, but this one always did appeal to me with that like step side look to the bed and everything. Just very sweet looking truck. So let's get him out of the package and get a better look at him. And this is one that I was really surprised it took this long for Hot Wheels to release this casting because I figured this would have been a very popular casting just in general not because of the fast and furious just because people really dug this truck so i'm surprised it took this long but i just seen that in the i think it's q case the newest case they have it in the main line and it's in gold which looks pretty cool too 
But this one is a must-have for all FNF fans because the Racer's Edge, Brian's work truck. So very cool piece to have. And even like with the wheels and stuff, they did a pretty good job with the wheels. Even though they're like the older style, like five slots, but they just look suited on this truck. So it looks really good. Um, and as I said, the Razor's Edge decal on the door with the address, phone number, everything really nicely done. The lightning emblems on the front fender are spot on. The grill and uh, headlights are really nicely done. The front spoiler or valence panel with the fog lights. Everything's nice on this truck. They did a heck of a job. And the side mirrors are part of the casting. Really cool. And even inside the bed is like, I think, part of the interior bucket. Because it's like a plastic, but it looks good though. It looks like it has the black like uh, spray in liner and the black edge protectors for the bed. So it looks really good. Tail light tampas are really nice. Even the Ford Oval, the SVT there, even the handle. So yeah, these Hot Wheels premium cars are really nice nowadays. They've really stepped it up with their stuff. And is some of the Hot Wheels castings still look like, well, Hot Wheels castings. But some of them that they're making nowadays are really realistic looking too. Like this Lightning. They did a heck of a job with it. So I am happy to have that in my collection. So let's go ahead and do our chase piece next. And this chase piece is nothing extravagant. Um, it's... But it is considered a chase piece. This is a Sam Walton F-250. And it's been in a lot of, well, I guess you could say a lot of cases as a chase truck just for Walmart. And the reason I say it's a chase piece because, well, it's Walmart only rubber tires, which main lines do not have rubber tires. And this truck wasn't first uh, released in the... Um, Main line. It was released back in 2013 or 2014 for the first time in the same style card. I just think the back ground, instead of being blue, was like a purplish color, if I'm remembering right. But at that time, we had like a music type series that was out. Um, and it was, had like, uh, I don't know, hip hop music and rock and roll. And it had cars with like that type of livery or paint job theme on it. But they inserted these into those cases sometimes. So that was the first time they appeared. And then they did it also, it, maybe not in the cars of the decades. I think the cars of the decades were before the music cars and then the music cars were the ones that had this appear in it. It was one of those series, but I remember because that's where I found mine hanging on the pegs, or actually I pulled them directly from those cases. Um, then they kind of took a break with it for a couple of years. Then uh, I think around 2017 or 18, they started popping them out into the mainline cases. So um, that's why I call it a chase truck, because it's always been known as a chase truck since it first appeared back and those cases. And the first release of this truck was actually from the Hot Wheels 100% Black Box series, but it was a little more detailed. Actually, the dog box in the back here actually had the one door open with the dog, uh, Old Roy, sitting on the tailgate. He was halfway in the box and halfway on the tailgate. And then it was an all metal casting, of course, I think, in the 100% series with grill details and so on but um that was back in 2000 i believe when they released that one so that's this is not the first appearance of this truck and uh this would have been not even another tooling i don't think just a little less detailed with the dog boxes and such things so let's get him out and get a better look at him because it's been a while since i've had one of these in my hands i have this one as I said, uh, from the first time it was appeared in that uh, rock and roll music series. And then 
I have uh, the black box one back in the States. But actually, I, the only one I've opened is the black box one. So this is the first time I've had one of these in my hands. And um, as you can see, plastic, chrome base. And as you can see, the copyright, I think, is 1999. So, yeah, that would have been when it appeared in the black box series. I think that's what it says. Maybe 98. But anyways, um, yeah, it's a very cool truck, though. It does look just like his. Jada even did one of these, too, with the little die-cast old Roy dog that comes with it, but Jada's is in 124 scale. As you can see, the white letters say Walmart. So really cool truck. Wish they would have done some grill detail, but it's like a super treasure hunt. You can't ask for everything because it is only a $1 truck. So, tell light tampos, which is cool. And I really never understood why it didn't have finished um, tampos. Like, why it has these little silver spots instead of, like, the body line. I'm not sure the whole story behind it, because now I see it here on the passenger side, or the driver's side of the bed. But you can't see this because it's in the package. You only get to see the passenger side, and I've always noticed this. And they have a couple of variations of this truck where, instead of being white, it's like a gray, like a dove gray insert. So there's a couple variants of this too, but that's kind of wild, all these little silver spots. I'm not sure why it is like that, but as I said, the passenger side on all of them, as far as I know, have these little silver dots in the bottom. Kind of always wondered why they were there. But still, yet a nice truck. And uh, as I said, I mean, I would call this a chase, and it is... As rare as any regular treasure hunt, maybe not as rare as a super treasure hunt, but same principle, rubber tires and uh, on a mainline casting. So, pretty cool truck, happy to have it in my collection. So, now let's move along to the top of the line ones. These are the RLC ones, and we will go ahead and do the next Ford well, another Ford, because we just did two Fords in a row. Might as well make it a trifecta. So, here you go. The Texas Drive-Em. This is actually my favorite variant of the Texas Drive-Em. I have a couple of the classics chase pieces, but this is a, by far my favorite. The wheels are perfect. The paint, the bikes, everything about this variant of the Texas Drive-Em is beautiful. Um, the first RLC release, the Real Riders one from back in 2012, it was nice too, but it had the solid chrome wheels on it, which is pretty cool. Same ones that the Classic Series chase vehicles have. Um, actually, the same ones that most Texas drive them with Real Riders have. But this actually is the first time it had these five spokes, and it looks really good with these and with this paint job. I really do dig it. They may have had this in a convention release with these five spokes, but I don't think so. I think all of them were the solid chrome wheels, but these five spokes here, they look terrific on this casting. This one's kind of already been opened, not because I opened it, because the glue came undone on the blister and the truck actually fell off the card. So it's been taped back on, as you can see uh, here. And it just kind of um, didn't even really tear the paper too much. As well, let's get him out and I'll show you guys. It's just like the glue never adhered to the cardboard, just in a couple little places, and that was it. So the blister like literally fell off this card. So it's always been open since I've had this truck, but it's just it wasn't opened by me. It just was opened by pure gravity, I think. <laughs> so. Uh, anyways, here he is. Really beautiful truck. As I said, luckily, 
that blister did come off because I was able to take it out and look at it with the chrome and black because you really can't appreciate the chrome too much while it's in the package but once you get it out you can see how brilliant the chrome is because it was reflecting the black on the package and it's got a red interior which is really cool red gas cans back there the bikes are fully detailed they look great and I don't know if that's a red knapsack or supposed to be a battery or what, but the very nice detail, the Ranger XLT decals. And then this one had the toolbox on the side, as you can see, the diamond plate opening, or diamond plate door, I should say, not opening, sorry guys. Sometimes I get ton twisted trying to remember all this stuff. And kind of read it out of the top or read it off the top of my mind spontaneously sometimes I mumble some words and mix up some words sorry about that so fully detailed grill with the winch the Ford emblem on the hood beautiful truck as you can see the hood is like a mirror love these chrome cars uh, and even color chrome cars are great too so fantastic truck really happy to have this variant of the texas drive um so yeah may not be the rarest or the most valuable one but it is to me the best looking one absolutely love this variant of the texas drive um and as i've said before nothing against ford it's just the least of like my favorites the trucks it's uh like usually Chevy, then Mopar, then Ford in real life. But when it comes to Hot Wheels or die cast, this is by far my favorite die cast truck ever released. I like it much more than the square bodies, much more than the power wagons. This truck is just absolutely gorgeous. Love it. Always have loved it since I seen it first in the classic series. That's when it debuted was back in... 2000, um, I don't know if it was 9, 2008, when the Classic Series 5 was released, and they had the Chase variants in that series. That's when this guy made his first appearance, and I've loved that truck ever since then. So, there's that one. So, last but not least, is one that I just got, for, got this weekend. Uh, actually, it was a gift from my wife for my birthday this weekend so I was very happy to get this uh, and it is well I kind of already slid it out of the white sleeve and I did that prior to take the picture uh, so it is the new RLC C10 so was happy to finally find one here because not Many RLC cars come up for sale here, um, but occasionally they do. So it took me a few months to get this, but finally it came in. So love the colors on this truck. Love the stance, and I love that it's an adjustable suspension. So really cool box, too. It's that sleeve insert, and then they have the hologram numbered Sticker and this is number 2140 of 12,500 made. So very cool. Metal, metal, real riders, Chevrolet C10. Very cool. And then the box is painted or printed in the same colors as the truck. So, and then the inside box is really cool. It's got this PVC cover with thumb finger areas where you could pull it off and it's actually got black felt in here like a jewelry box or something so very very cool they took really good care of this truck so let's get him out of here and take a look at him and this truck is beautiful this paint job I don't even know what to call this like a root beer brown but as you can see it's like a mirror with like a brown tint so as you could see the phone my face everything perfectly clear in this paint job it's beautiful and then with this beige insert very cool 
very perfect color combination, I think. It's not one I would typically think of off the top of my head, but it is very nice. So yeah, this is a 1969 Chevy C10. I kind of was too excited to show you guys and forgot to tell you what it was, except for that it was a Chevy C10. But this is a 1969 whole new casting. I actually thought they were basing this or taking the uh, 1967 Chevy fleet side C10 that they have. I thought they were just going to mod it and make this car or this casting, but they didn't. This is a whole new casting. So really nicely done with the tail light tampos, tailgate tampos, everything. And you can see the plate's pretty cool. It says up and down. So it's pretty cool because the suspension. So very beautiful truck. And it's also got the, like, I don't know, bronze or, as I said, kind of like root beer tinted windows too. Um... So, on the base, here's where all the action takes place. It has this little knob that you turn to adjust the ride height. I thought it was going to be something like Ravel Lowriders, but it's not. But as you could see, it's like each side. You can't do front and back. It has to be up and down, and that's it. So, as you could see, like when you move the back wheel, it moves the front wheel. It has horizontal braces that attach front and back and then you take and turn this clockwise and then it locks and then it is up to its normal rolling height which is pretty nice look too so it looks really good at stock stance and slam stance so very cool truck was really excited to get this this weekend so kind of knew it was coming it wasn't really like a surprise birthday gift because my wife told me to just to pick something out so I did and so I knew it was coming but it still was a surprise it got here like perfect timing for uh, my birthday over the weekend so it was a great um, so this is it guys this is all six of them and uh, they are all great uh, as far as I'm concerned. I have no issues with none of them. Uh, as I said, lack of light detail, but that's you know a common thing that we know about Hot Wheels. So anyways, uh, Wednesday, we will be doing a chase unboxing of some Ultra Reds, some newer Ultra Reds, a new square body and the new Jeep. We'll also be doing their regular counterparts and then also the other color variants of the Jeep Wrangler. So we have like five or six cars to unbox on Wednesday. And uh, then this weekend, I will be doing a uh, tribute to like barn find cars and project cars. So we'll be looking at those on Saturday. But Wednesday, we'll be doing our Chase unboxing. So make sure you tune back in for the Auto World Round 2 Chase unboxing. Um, so if you have not subscribed yet, please remember to do so. Please give me a thumbs up and please share the video. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you on Wednesday.